The last part of this discussion will be dis uh, looking at Chick's Law. For disinfection and a way to describe the disinfection kinetics that you would have in this uh, system. And so change in population over change in time can be described as the uh, negative K, the Chick's Law reaction rate constant, K times N. And N in this particular instance is the number of microorganisms that you would have. At some particular time, and this is again the Chick's reaction rate constant, units of 1 over time. And this is equation 1027 in your textbook. And so the change in rate, number of microbes over change in time, you can integrate this and simplify this natural log n over n naught, population over population naught at some particular time, negative k t. And there's a really good um, example problem that uh, has been provided in your textbook. And so I'll get that in just a second here. Alright, so I have example 10.7 in your textbook. And so given the data in the first three columns in table 10.22, and so we'll bring this down here. And so we are looking at this set of data here. We have one example or one instance, and then we have another instance that is right here. And so this would be concentration. This is the dose that we have put into the system of chlorine, milligrams per liter, the, and then we have the time, and then the number of microorganisms that were alive, number of organisms per liter for each one of these time intervals. So going from 500 to 0.2. Here we have uh, a lower dose, and so time, and we have 500 to 1.5. And so we can graph this data. And so I'll just slide up here to the solution here. And so we have, uh, this is sort of distant inactivating poliovirus type 1 using a disinfectant bromine. And Chick's Law rate constant for each one. And so you want to plot this data. And we'll take the natural log n over n naught as a function of time. And so we have the different doses that are here. So let's uh, make sure we get these colors correct. Here's our first dose, and it's a, it's a higher dose, so we would assume, or it would be safe to assume, that you have fewer microbes that would be at the, alive during that, in that high dose versus the uh, lower dose. It's a lower dose right here. And you can get there, if you plot this on Excel, you can get uh, the slope of the line, the residual or R squared, how it describes that. And uh, note that this is not the natural log that I have uh, shown, or that even how I described that previously. So this one we have a log. So this is all log-based. And so you can plot these on there. And so the slope of the line, once you back calculate what those uh, values are and put it into the correct equation, um, this is a log base. And so you would have to transfer from the log base to the natural log base. And so solve for the value, then, uh, then solve for it at the natural log base. And so the slope is equal to the Chick's rate constant, k, which I described uh, up here above. So again, natural log base. And so we got to go between these different ones, and you get the, that natural log base. And that homework problem that you have um, is very similar uh, to this type of problem. So the CT, the Chick's Law Inactivation Constant, is uh, a way to describe this. Now if you have uh, you know, some of the problem statements you might find. So if you have 99% uh, inactivation at some particular time, so 99% of the microbes that you started with in the water have been inactivated, that would be equal to 2 log removal. It's a common term. If we had 99.99% well inactivation, well that is uh, 4 log removal. So just counting the decimal places past there. Uh, and so, and there will be certain requirements by different governing agencies, EPA I believe, and the Clean Water Act. Uh, um, 
you have different log removals for different types of um, uh, viruses or things you would have in the water. And they'll tell you how many log removal you're supposed to have in that. Uh, if we look at figure, let's look at figure 1017. So I'll stop here for a minute and get that. All right, so I have that loaded onto here. And so we are, so this one problem, we were looking at polio virus. So here we have chloramines, free chlorine, chlorine dioxide, ozone, UV light. And so we're looking for polio virus here, polio virus here. Polio virus has a broader range and polio virus, oh, there it is right there. And so this is the required CT concentration times time. And that's what these sum or these values would be. And so we can see chloramine is not as effective, so that CT value is a little bit higher than what we would expect for free chlorine. And so it takes a higher concentration or higher dose of chlorine to inactivate poliovirus chlorine dioxide. Uh, so it's down here, a much lower one. Poliovirus here for uh, ozone at this point. And so this is a way to compare and contrast the different types of uh, doses you might have uh, related to water treatment. And so which one would be the most effective one for uh, removing polio virus? Well, just looking at this, it appears that uh, chlorine dioxide with that low CT might be, but we got to see what else is also in the water uh, that it might react with. So, and then how much it might cost as well. So UV light uh, certainly is effective, but uh, it's quite expensive as well. So those are the types of evaluations you would do. So your homework problems do look at uh, these things, uh, uh, look at these things uh, and compare and contrast uh, these in your particular system. And I want to lastly look at table 9-4. Let me find that real quick. All right, I found it. It's uh, Davis table 9-4 in your supplemental materials for chapter 10. So I dragged this down here. And so this is CT values for, it looks like a three log removal, GRD assist and activation at uh, certain pHs. And you can see there definitely is a temperature effect with this system. So we've got chlorine dioxide as the temperature goes up these become uh, a little less effective. Chlorine dioxide, the CT value 14, chlorine 48, so it's kind of that's free chlorine, ozone very low, chloramines quite high, and so it's uh, not quite as effective. Chloramines are very good for the secondary disinfection uh, in the distribution system where you don't need as large a dose uh, to maintain or, or that residual in your particular system. And so it's just a way of comparing, contrasting these uh, specifics uh, in that system. So that's it for uh, chlorine. Uh, you've got that homework that is due to graph problems that will be due here. And I might push that back up to Wednesday to complete that. And otherwise, we're going to work on some in-class uh, design of a water treatment plant uh, for the rest of this week. All right, thank you, and we'll catch you later.